It's common cause that, at least in terms of Standard & Poor's judgment, we stand on the precipice of a ratings downgrade to sub-investment status. S&P rates us the worst of the three main rating agencies, with their judgment being triple B minus with a negative watch. Most would suggest that there's a very strong likelihood that we will be downgraded. So many have suggested that South Africa's downgrade is already priced in. And I think the suggestion, as well as the question of whether our, our downgrade is priced in, is inaccurate to the extent that it seems to suggest that an economy is a static, that the channels of transmission have all fully absorbed the potential ratings downgrade, and by suggesting it's priced in, it is already transmitted to all dimensions of South African society. And that's wrong. Most people, when they say, is it priced in, or they suggest it's priced in, I suppose they reference financial markets. The reality is that for the most of South Africans, their lives are, are lived in the real economy. Put differently, financial markets can sometimes be judged as a balance sheet, whereas the real economy can be judged mm -hmm. as where incomes and employment really manifest. Financial markets tend to convulse prior to the downgrade. The real economy smashes afterwards. And so that consideration brings better context to my earlier suggestion that perhaps suggesting that the credit ratings downgrade is priced in is only partial in terms of saying perhaps yes with respect to financial markets, but hardly so with respect to the real economy. Sub-investment status will usher in a recession, in our view. We think as a function of just the downgrade, we've already had stresses, financial conditions tightening, which has already impeded the labor markets. In addition to that, the downgrade to sub-investment, in our view, will likely trip another 200,000 jobs within the formal economy. And on the assumption that each formal job carries at least three dependents, it suggests that another 600,000 <coughs> lives will be blighted, mm -hmm. dependents' lives will be blighted as a function of that, uh, those job risks. Could 2016 be an inflection point? As much as my, so much of my narrative this morning has had an enormous amount of pessimism and perhaps a, a bleak outlook as a, as a core underpin. 2016 has that potential of being an inflection point to the extent that there is a contest in society between, crudely put, reformers and rent seekers. I would suggest that Minister Praveen Gordon has emerged as a fulcrum figure around which so much of our more constructive governance aspirations hinge. And should he trip, should he fall, so much of his endeavor at reform could potentially lose its momentum. There is room for qualitative considerations. And hence, I try to also suggest to you the possibility for a reprieve comes in and if I can use my hands to articulate a GDP profile, but a political profile that seems to be somewhat in terms of reform ascendancy, that gives us the hope that even though GDP in its own right would be, would be reason to, to downgrade South Africa, especially given that it's so mar it would be so markedly below population growth, for the first time we have a semblance of social compact emerging in the form of government and business with national treasury at the helm and certain labor segments also subscribing to this, um, this dialogue. And we should not underestimate the meaning of, of what has been born out of what initially was the president's overreach in December. And SNP um, said to me quite simply that they will not 
they of course will not take this decision lightly um, and I trust that they will do that. I have the hope that Standard and Poor's leans heavily towards a qualitative assessment or the qualitative elements within the assessment and provides, a, provides South Africa with a reprieve. And I do think it is both probable and plausible. However, any sensible, commercially minded firm or household should prepare for a downgrade. Thank you.